Just to provide some clarity with this example, we consider a one-step problem where you may throw a coin or maybe roll a dice and you look at the chance of one particular event happening. In this example what we're doing is looking at multiple steps. So what we might do is not just throw one coin in the air but throw two coins and see what the chances of various events are. In this case we've got two coins being tossed and we're looking at the chance that two tails occur. So the first thing we need to do is be very careful to look at the outcomes in this case. So what we're going to do is have a look at a way to do that and we're going to form a tree diagram. In a tree diagram what we do is we look at the first coin. So we know that when you throw one coin there are two possibilities. There's a head or a tail and we can see that in this diagram here. We've basically got branches of our tree. Then what we do for the next step is we look at the instance where a head occurs and say okay if we threw a head on the first coin what's the possibilities for the second coin? Likewise if we threw a tail on the first coin what's the possibilities for the second coin in that instance? So we branch off from each case from the first coin. Let's have a look at what it looks like for two coins if a head occurred on the first coin. We can see here in our diagram that the second coin can also be a head or a tail. So if the first coin was a head, the second coin doesn't care or has no knowledge of what happened on the first coin, so it can be a head or a tail. Likewise, if a tail occurred on the first coin, the possibilities for the second coin are again a head and a tail. So this tree diagram branches off for each extra coin that we throw, showing all the possibilities for each step. Now what we do is we have a look at the final outcomes if we were to throw two coins. And we do that by looking at our tree diagram, starting at the top and scrolling across from left to right. We can see here in the first instance that we could have a head and a head. So two heads off two coins. If we go down to the next layer of our tree diagram, we could see that we've got a head then a tail. Moving down the tree diagram, we could have a tail on the first coin and a head on the second. And the last possibility is two tails. And we've listed those underneath the heading of outcomes. So our sample space for all the possibilities that can occur for two coins is that we could have a head and a head, a head and a tail, a tail and a head, or two tails. Now the interesting thing to consider here is if we consider the events where we're looking at the number of tails that can occur, we've got three possibilities. We've got no tails, one tail on the coins, or two tails. And those probabilities are not equal because we can see here that the chance of getting one tail is twice as likely as the chance of getting no tails or two tails. Let's have a look at the possibilities by looking at the probabilities in some different cases. Here we're looking at the probability of getting two tails. So the event is getting two tails on the toss of two coins. There is one favourable outcome. We can see that from our sample space out of four possibilities. So the probability of getting two tails is one out of four. Let's have a look now at the probability of getting one tail. There are two favourable outcomes. We can see that from our sample space. We could get a head and a tail or we could get a tail and a head. So there's two possibilities and there are four outcomes in total. So the probability of getting one tail is two out of four. Now let's have a look at the probability of getting at least one tail on the coins. We can see from our sample space that we've got three possibilities highlighted. We could have one tail and there's two outcomes there or we could have two tails. So the probability of getting at least one tail is three out of four. So we used a tree diagram to work out those probabilities. Let's have a look at the same problem, but this time we'll use a table. And we set up a table as follows. What we do is we have the top of our table representing the possibilities from the first coin, or whatever you happen to have. In this case, we're using heads and tails in our coin. You'll notice down the left-hand side, that head and the tail represents the second coin. So in our table, what we'll do is we'll fill in the spaces inside representing the possibilities from the first coin. And we've done that here in red. We've got a head in the head column for the first coin and a tail for the tail column of the first coin. And we'll match up now the possibilities from the second coin. And we'll do that in a different color so you can clearly see it. 
So going across in the first row inside the table, we've noted here in black the heads, and that's representing the second coin. And in the second row inside our table, we've got T for tail. Again, that's representing the second coin. And you'll notice that all the possible outcomes inside the table are the same that occurred when we used our tree diagram. So again, our sample space here, we list with two heads, a head and a tail, a tail and a head, and two tails. So to answer our question of what is the chance or probability of at least one tail occurring, we can see from our sample space that there are three outcomes where at least one tail occurs. In other words, they are favourable outcomes, and that's out of a total of four. So the probability of at least one tail is three over four. So there's two ways to represent all the outcomes that can occur, and it's strongly recommended that when you get any question where there are multiple steps, in other words, two coins are tossed or two dice are rolled, or possibly there's a combination, so a coin and a dice are thrown and you have to work out the probability of various events, it's suggested that you draw a tree diagram or show a table so you can actually see all of the possible outcomes.